Today, I'm going to share with you a technique to incorporate explosions or smoke simulations into your 3D scenes really easily in a way that's not too intensive on your laptop because sometimes smoke simulations and explosions in Blender can be very CPU or GPU intensive. And if you already have a heavy scene, it becomes almost impossible to incorporate them. This technique will not be too customizable, but sometimes it can be really, really fast and help you finish off a scene and add in realism instantly very easily. So let's figure out how we can do that. The first thing that we need to do is actually find some explosion footage. For that, we can go to some websites such as Pixabay where you can search for explosion videos. So we'll just search for an explosion and you need to find any video that has a completely black background or a completely white background. For example, this one might do or if you keep scrolling, you'll find something like this or you could even use something like this, which has a completely white background. I'll show you how to use all of them. If you don't want any other type of videos to be present, you can actually search for an explosion inlay and that way you get videos that are just black backgrounds. Apart from that, you can always search for smoke as well and you could use some of these if you wish to do so. Once you find the videos that you like, you can go ahead and just select them and download them. And once you're done, you can open up Blender. So I've set up this small little scene just to help show the 3D aspects in your scene. But what we'll do is we'll go to our edit preferences and go to the add-ons tab. And over there, we'll search for the import images as planes add-on. So you have to make sure that this add-on is checked and then you can go ahead and close it. After that, you can press shift A and search for image. And underneath that, you'll get a new option called images as planes. Select it and then choose the image file from wherever you've stored it. When you select the file, make sure that you keep the blend mode at hashed. If you want it to have nice reflections, if you don't require reflections, you can keep it at blend itself, but make sure that it's either blend or hashed. Apart from that, for explosions, I want to keep the material type at emit so that I can increase the bloom later on if I want to. With that, explosions generally don't have shadows, so I'm going to change the shadow mode to none. And then you can click import images as planes. Now a new image has been imported. In order to see it, make sure that you have the viewport change as rendered by pressing this button here and for my world settings i do have my bloom and screen space reflections checked and every single one of these cubes have similar materials where the roughness is basically zero so that there are nice reflections shown on the floor is metallic and this one is slightly darker that's about it but now let's select the explosions image that we have and press gz to bring it up on the z-axis till it comes just on top of the base mesh and you see a completely black video which is what is expected because we downloaded a video with a black background now in order to remove the black background all you have to do is go to the shading tab by clicking and dragging from the junction of these two windows and changing this to the shader editor. Now, if you actually take this image texture and move it to the side, you can see that we have the alpha connected to the alpha, but our image does not have any alpha channel. So what we do is we remove the alpha channel over here and we simply connect the color into the alpha. And by connecting the color into the alpha, you see all the black regions become transparent and now you have just an explosion occurring right there. In case you want the explosion to look even more like an explosion, you can increase the emission strength to something like five and instantly you have a really epic explosion happening in real time within your scene which is essentially just another plane that's added in so it's really fast to calculate and it looks pretty cool if you want it to happen again and again you can check cyclic and that way it'll just keep repeating the cycle and you can always play around with the scale to make it larger and things like that it's completely up to you as to how you want to use this but you see you get really nice reflections on the floor and on the sides if this is kept at alpha hash if you were to change this from alpha hash to alpha blend there would be less noise but if you have other alpha blend objects present the reflections would no longer work so that's how you can actually incorporate an explosion really easily but it doesn't have to just be explosions as i explained you could use maybe smoke simulations as well to add in some depth to your scene so let's say we want some fogginess added to this scene press shift a search for images as planes and select your smoke overlay just like last time it comes in with a black background so to change that as we do we go ahead and take the color of the image texture and plug that into the alpha now we can grab it on the z-axis to just bring it up and if we switch on overlays just to see where the plane is you can see that we don't exactly see the entire smoke overlay so to make it even more prominent again just increase the emission strength and that way you should be able to see more of the smoke come in now it's also at an angle so to fix that we can actually go to the object constraint properties over here and add in a new object constraint which is going to be the copy rotation and now we can select the camera and that way it's always going to be facing perfectly towards the camera and for this one i'm going to change the blend mode to alpha blend and now when i press GZ twice to go into the local axis. I can just bring it down and place it right about here. And that way we now have some smoke present in our scene as well. So that's just a method in which you can add in some 
depth to your scene and again it's just a single plane that was added in so it takes almost no extra computing power now another thing is that the video has the smoke coming in at around frame 50 or 60 but i wanted to start off right at frame zero so in order to change that you can actually use this offset and make this 50 so that right after we start the animation the smoke also comes in so you can actually have controls like that if you want it to repeat you can switch on cyclic if you don't want it to start instantly you can actually change the start frame so there's a lot of settings that you can play around with to get the exact desired results but let's suppose you have a different scene where you want a video that has a white background how do we take care of that for that purpose again we'll just add in the video with the white background so press shift a image images as planes choose the one with the white background and now select it we'll just grab it to the side so that we can play around with it over here and this time if we actually take this and plug the color into the alpha as we did before you'll see that wherever the smoke is there that area becomes transparent and the background still remains so to fix that it's really simple we press shift a search for a color ramp node plug that in right over here and we just flip the color ramp by bringing this slider to the left and the slider to the right and that way we again remove the white background and have just our smoke present in the center so that seems to work very well for things that have white backgrounds as well in case you want to fix up the edges you can always do that by bringing in the black slider and things like that it's up to you you can change the type from linear to ease and that way you just get smoother falloffs and things like that but again it's up to you and what your preferences are and what your requirements are if you want the entire thing to become a little bit more transparent because right now it might be too opaque you can always select the white slider and start bringing the white value in towards the black and that way it starts becoming more and more transparent overall so those are just different settings that you can play around with of course emission strength and things like that but again have fun playing around with the settings to get something that you like lastly what if you have a green screen footage because those are more prevalent on stock footage websites what you could do is again add one in so press shift a image images as planes and once you've added it in press g y bring it over to the side g z move it up and now we have to actually remove all of the green from this particular video so to remove the green from this video what we do is we first subtract all of the green and then we add back the reds and the blues so again plug the color into the alpha but we don't want all the color to just go into the alpha we need only the green channel so we search for a separate color node and we plug that in right here now if we directly plug the red into the alpha wherever the red values are green Greater than one the video is seen so we can actually just add in the blues as well by pressing shift a searching for a math node and then taking the blue and plugging that into the second value by doing that we essentially remove all of the greens and we get the green screen basically removed so that is one method in which you can get all of the green screen videos as well and you get like really nice explosions that are seen perfectly well a better way to actually remove the green screens is by using your video editing section adding in the video with the green screen and using chroma key to remove the green screen and using that new image as the image as plane. If you want to see how to do that, let me know in the comments below and I'll make a tutorial on how to use the video editor of Blender to remove green screens and things like that to make these look even better. And hopefully with that, you'll be able to now incorporate different explosions, smoke overlays and various other situations into your 3D scenes to make your renders faster, more vibrant and much cooler. Of course, again, remember this doesn't have to be done only with smoke overlays and explosions. You might as well have something that you've already rendered previously which you could simply add into your 3d scene by removing the black backgrounds or anything like that any png image in fact could be added in just like this and could technically behave as a 3d object the effect works best when the plane is facing the camera so with that i think i've covered everything there is to cover about this so thank you so much for watching and if you like this one be sure to let me know so that i can make more tips such as this one and until the next video comes out keep creating and stay creative